play. Is it really, do you feel just a matter of, of being able to be fit and play your game and, and these results are coming or is there something more to it than that? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, definitely I'm sure to in some different physical areas and I think uh, putting together some of those physical um, improvements and allowing myself to do some things um, technically uh, more sound I think has been really helpful. So the physical work that I put into my um, you know, my day to day is like really important, and I feel like I spend so much more time in the gym and running. And, you know, most people, I really work my ass off. Um, you know, fortunately, not that many people get to really see that, but um, yeah, I put a lot of hard work into it, so it's nice that I can kind of now make some technical adjustments with those physical movements. For, for Floridian, your, your player's box is kind of empty. Um, yeah. Where is everybody? Are your parents here? Or? Yeah, I, you know, I feel like we had, um, you know, I had a rough go for a few years there just reporting on everything in my personal life and, you know, I'm, I'm sick of that and at this point I don't really appreciate, like, sometimes the narratives that we get drawn into. Um, and, you know, a lot of really positive interactions previously. Um, with my boss and a lot of great people supporting me and unfortunately sometimes the way things happen on or the way things seem to appear get um, kind of a yeah like a mistold story and then yeah so we're just trying to eliminate the drama and and keep it really simple so that my life is not um, you know Feeling like I, feeling like I, ha, you know, am just like in this simulation theory where it's everybody's story. So, yeah. <laughs> um, for you, what do you draw inspiration from like, this today or nowadays for you? Yeah, I mean, I think so much of the hard work that we put in over the course of our career, we, um, you know, most of us have been playing since we're like six, seven, eight years old and like have spent so much time, you know, this is a full-time job. And even when you're a junior, the way that junior tennis works and how you play like 50 tournaments. Like I, I've had a couple years where I literally played 50 tournaments and I played over 100 matches those years. And, you know, the stress that that not only puts on you, but like your family and like my parents, like we're working double jobs and you know I, I remember you know feeling so bad if, if I didn't have a good tournament or if I didn't play well because I, I knew how hard my mom was working and would literally work from like 6 a.m. to like 6 p.m. every day and um, you know just them doing everything for me to be able to have the opportunity to come out here to earn a scholarship to now play professional tennis and so I think that's where a lot of my motivation comes from my parents did everything for me as a kid to get me in a um, in an environment that was really like positive, positive and motivating and in an environment too where you can succeed but where you can also learn to accept failure and I think the tennis teaches you so many incredible lessons so without that experience and without my parents you know giving me um, or allowing me and driving me like all over the state to play these like silly junior tournaments I mean I have give them so much credit because you know, I'm talking about having kids here shortly, and, you know, I don't know if we're going to be going to 50 <laughs> tournaments a year. I don't know. And, you know, I'm in a lot different situation, too, financially, and I, I just, yeah. So I think about those times a lot, and I think about it a lot with my dad. Like, 85 years old now, he had me a lot later in life, and my dad used to get up with me at, like, 5 in the morning, and we would go and practice. Who does that? It's like pretty amazing, especially at that age. You know, he could have he could be doing other things and like resting, but he wanted to be out there and help me and let me live out my my dream. Is that what you're thinking of when you're playing this tournament? Well, I'm playing really area? well right now, so I'm pretty locked in and focused. But whenever I have a bad day, I'm like, oh, you know. This isn't a bad day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you, it's not that bad, you know? Do you think because, I mean, you've said this is your last season, do you think now you're a quarterfinalist at Miami Open, do you think that's what's, like, letting you play freely and sort of you know there is an, 
end in sight? Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I've had times where I've played freely and I've played really great tennis. And I think a lot of it has to do with like the concentration and, you know, feeling like, okay, you've got momentum going from like previous weeks and playing lots of matches and not just coming off like training weeks. And like, you, I think with when you're playing a lot of matches, you feel like kind of that momentum and you, you feel like you can settle into the matches a little bit better. So I think with all the matches that I've played over the course of this year, I mean, it's been more than I have done in some seasons. So I think that's really what's helping me the most. Cause I mean, I don't really have much pressure on me. My parents are the type of people too. Like if I worked at CBS or I was delivering pizzas, like it wouldn't really matter. It, you know, like they would still be, they would still be just as proud and would be supportive. I don't feel like, you know, I have to be like this like professional tennis player or like doing this if I don't want to. And, and I feel like maybe in a lot of ways that's helped me, but maybe in some ways, if I, you know, had somebody that's like, you must, you must play tennis. Maybe it would, you know, I don't know. Maybe never know. a fire under my ass. I don't know. You know, you never know. Don't know if you're lacking you? that. <laughs> the motivation yeah. is. I, mean, I have a nine and seven year old daughter who play a lot. And it's always trouble. What's the best way to do? I definitely don't recommend putting that much pressure on the child. Like, see, from seeing it, like, you know, people and friends that have had those situations, I definitely don't recommend that. I heard once that your dad had you playing with his friends a lot at, like, the park courts or something. Yeah. Is that, what, can you speak a little bit more about that and how that was different or how that might have helped you Yeah. As a player? My dad, I mean, you know, I... I Hello. Hey. I think this is the first time I've done a stream with you. Yes, it is. Very exciting. Yes, nice. How are you doing? I'm okay. It took me a while to kind of get situated for this, um, but I'm good. I've got the match. I have snacks. I'm ready for nice. a battle. How are you? I'm okay, yeah. Um, just came up from a regular people duty and just some grocery shopping so <laughs> yeah did, did yeah. you see any of uh the match that just ended carlos versus dimitrov i uh catched i saw like the last two games i think yeah oh well, i also only saw like the last two games <laughs> yeah yeah but i was I'm... out so i couldn't check most of it but yeah he was playing really well this whole tournament to me has been kind of wacky, yeah. especially on the women's side. Like everyone I sort of expected to be in the semis are gone. Uh, I think the only top 10 player left is Rabakina. Um, and now on the men's side, like it's, I, I feel like it's a little bit, bit of an open field. So yeah, I'm kind of, this was a, this was a weird tournament. Yeah. I'm trying to get uh, man the Miami website draws are just kind of not working well so I'm just trying to see it the who's in who's left in the WTA right now okay yeah it's it's interesting like on the WTA side because you still have like Collins and uh, Azarenka who are um really great players so well, like, Azarenka on, is yeah. out now yeah, I know, but yeah, she 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 was on the semifinal side, I'd say. Yeah. The 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 women who reached that, it's it's it was still a pretty good lineup for a semifinal. That's the, that's what I'm trying to say. Even though yeah. like some of the big players kind of bowed about out early, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I wouldn't have expected Daniel Collins to make it this far yeah. honestly i 
I'm I'm pleased. Like I'm I'm very excited for her. I hope this. Uh, I know that she has talked about this being her last year uh, playing, and yeah, I know a lot of people online have been saying like, oh, well, maybe this will, you know, change her mind about retiring. But like for me, if she retires having played a, an amazing year, having gotten to the semis or the finals of a 1000, like I, I would be fine with her retiring on a high like that. That works for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, from what she's been saying, I find it really hard that she's going to change her mind. You never really know, like a year is still a pretty long time, but yeah, I don't know. Her reasons seem very compelling <laughs> to go out. So yeah. But it would be interesting because I believe, does she live in Florida? I think she does. I think a lot of them, a lot yeah. of players do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think this tournament would be a really, a really good one for her to win. Um, really meaningful, I'd say. So it'd be nice. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I guess like if Rabakina is like the strongest, most favorite to win um especially right now like she, obviously she's in the final but um against either alexandrova or um collins she is a heavy favorite i would say what do you think yeah i would say so but i think she could have trouble hmm. in the final because she's she's definitely like had some shaky moments in every round like especially against Zachary I, I noticed like she was not really playing her best she still managed to win but both mm -hmm. her and Zachary were kind of just not playing well making a lot of unforced errors I think Rabakina was really struggling with her forehand mm -hmm. um and then in her match today she got bageled in the second set yeah so uh, I feel like she's not on the absolute top of her game. She's just kind of gritting these matches out, yeah. which <laughs> is working. But like I having to do that over and over, I, I worry about her in the final. So I, I'm hoping that, you know, maybe by the time she's there, uh, yeah. she'll have sorted herself out. Hmm. What do you think has been a bit of the reason for her shakiness? Is like any part of her game that isn't quite, um, I haven't really much watched a lot of tennis like it was i would say probably this past like after this the golden the golden swing in, in latin america i've been a little out but i've been trying to get into tennis like especially for this one tournament specifically so like slowly but surely getting there but i haven't really gotten to see much of uh, her matches even so what do you think has been um her yeah some physical issues but is there any part of her game in particular that is like suffering movement or serve or forehand well i think in the in the match against sakari there was something really wrong with her forehand for sure that was not not working for her like it normally would it's hard for me to say because i haven't seen i haven't watched a lot of her matches leading up to this i think mm -hmm. i i only saw the sakari match uh in full um yeah. So it's hard for me to say. I've also seen a little bit of like her sort of mental toughness, not weakened by any, but like change. Cause you know, she's normally this very like ice cold, like nothing really uh, bothers her. Like she doesn't show any kind of frustration on court. I've definitely seen some moments where, you know, she kind of like, is about to throw her racket and then stops or like she she did a couple of like you know angrily hitting the ball that comes back mm -hmm. to her into the stands yeah so I, i've been I, something seems to be like shifting or you know i hesitate to use a word like deteriorating but some it seems like something is just not clicking in that yeah. way for her like it normally would so but it's hard for me to say like physically what what's wrong with her game yeah because she's still winning. <laughs> That's the other yeah, thing. I mean, yeah. She's still beating people, but it's it just doesn't seem like it's very easy. Yeah. I mean, in a way, that's kind of good, though, right? Because a lot of the times, like, Rabakina hasn't been um, super able to, like, um, grind matches out, like, just for a win. So I feel like this is kind of bringing out something in her just that um, 
it's good like in the sense that when you're playing badly when things are not going your way she can kind of find a way to cross the line so this is it's 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 good it's, it's a good skill to have and to develop i would say so yeah could be only more dangerous for players in the future if she keeps playing um finding ways to win even when she's not doing the best yeah and so meanwhile we have a a break for alexandrova but yeah uh, collins is about to get it back yeah so i'm a little behind the tennis mm -hmm. channel is not good uh <laughs> At, at doing it's the one job that it has it so just, i'm roughly like three or four points behind yeah oh, yeah I so think it's like, I, yeah. you're gonna have to take the lead on like updating what's going on because i'm not gonna be very good at it okay yeah i don't know why tc tsn is has a better stream i have no idea why tennis the US is network. Like consistently and i think it's like consistently like Oh, every single time or something. Yeah. It feels like more than that sometimes. Like, yeah. but it's, yeah, it's every match I've watched this yeah. year has been consistently behind. Yeah. And in this match right now, what it seems like it's the case is going to be like a, obviously a heavy hitting final, uh, not final, but like match, um, semi final. And it kind of is looking like um, the server. Is going to have to defend really well especially the second serve because they're just going to like hammer it down like on the second serve um there's going to be a lot of like big flat shots coming you're going to see the point that uh collins broke serve it's just it's just like power hitting all the way through i feel like a body serve could be a good strategy for both of them really Mm -hmm. Just going a lot into the body, just kind of neutralizing the swing a bit. And I'm yeah. only saying this because Collins started doing that. So I'm like, well, that's actually a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm finally at the first break point. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah for, you guys are for, very. For Collins. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, the game's already over. <laughs> Are you in um, in the states right now? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, because the states is the only place where you can get tennis channel. Yeah, I'm in the states, so arguably it should be the best, easiest stream to have. It's That's crazy. Terrible. It's not even like good quality either. Like, and that could be mm. my internet, but I don't think it's my internet. Mm. Uh, it consistently like craps out on me, like gets really pixelated, or the yeah. app itself just like quits. And then I have to go back and start over. So yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. They need I don't know exactly match. what it is, but does that happen on the men's matches as well? Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. Cause uh, I'm I'm on WTA TV and it's sometimes it's just like it just becomes like potato footage, which is really <laughs> weird. But the, the tennis TV streams are always like perfect to me like my my stream is not 4k so uh i'm, I'm still rocking that full hd 1080 uh, stream resolution i know it's not 4k uh that they stream but at least like it's like 60 frames per second it's it's a pretty solid high quality footage right now i cannot complain by my deputy footage tv footage though but sometimes it's it's just laggy so where are you at you gotta, okay. um, <laughs> so I'm at 15 love to all. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can see what you mean now. Like Collins is really just wailing on the, <laughs> on, on a racket. So yeah, yeah it's, it's going to be a slug fest, I think. Mm -hmm. I also love her kit. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, she always has interesting choices, you know, but like this kit is really working for me. Mm. I, I, uh, yeah. I like it a lot better than um, Alexandrova's. Yeah. Getting a closer look at her her shirt, it kind of looks like you could wear this for multiple kind of different occasions, not just yeah. sports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like, I don't see that sort of dark green in a lot of tennis outfits so I, i'm just i'm digging mm. it i love tennis fashion 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, Fila normally isn't a great <laughs> kit maker, if you will. They're not yeah. very good fashionistas, if you <laughs> What's your favorite brand or the one that most consistently makes good stuff? Oh, I don't want to be obvious and you know, and just say Nike, but Nike, yeah. I do feel like their, their kits are just better. <laughs> like mm, yeah. they do, they do make some crazy choices sometimes, but I think they always give those sort of crazy patterns or something like to the right players who yeah. can pull it off. But then, and for the, on the WTA side of things, like they, they do come up with very cute, you know, Thing. Like I just, the, I, Nike's probably the one I, I consistently like. Uh, Adidas mm. is probably maybe bottom of the list for me. Also, I think New Balance uh, is mm. doing a lot better. Like they're yeah. coming up and coming up every year. I think Coco Goff, having her on their uh, roster is really raising the bar because every outfit she's had yeah. Yeah. since the US Open has been awesome. So. Yeah. New Balance and Nike, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think um, Coco, at the moment of signing the contract, she goes like, "All right, I'll sign with you." But <laughs> y'all gotta do better. <laughs> yeah, let's have a big meeting about that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be wearing. <laughs> I once met someone who worked in the like sportwear. Uh, division of Ralph Lauren. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I got sort of overly excited and was like, please tell me what everyone's wearing at the US Open this year. <laughs> and she was sort of like, I can't, I don't know why anyone would want to know about that. <laughs> Forgive me for one second. There's someone knocking at my door. I no, have to no go worries. answer. That's fine. All right, for those who are watching in the long 3015 for Alexandrova, but um, the patterns kind of continue. Second serve just getting punished all the time. Um, it's going to be a match of winner of like zero to four, um, one to four um, shots rally. So, um, yeah, whoever aims most for the forehand, I think, is going to get most punished, especially on the second serve sides. So far, it's looking a little like um, Alexandra, but um, might be a bit of an underdog for this match, even though her ranking is higher. She's 14th seed. But uh, Collins just seems to be managing the situation a lot better. So. And Alexandra was five games in, sixth game of the match. She's already showing a lot of frustration with her. Um, sometimes a little bit too passive on her ground strokes, and Collins is just uh, aggressive from, from the gates. So sorry, yes, I agree with all of that. <laughs> I just got thrown off two like Bible sellers were just in my front oh. door. <laughs> So I'm kind of like, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what's happening? So you're uh, at 40, you're at 30, 40. I'm at 40 all right now. You're at 40 all. Okay. I'm at 30, 15. <laughs> okay. Alexandra kind of is right now looking like she's the type of player that when she's kind of tired or she, she gets frustrated, she just hits it harder. Yeah. So it could it could pay off for her if she doesn't make mistakes. But she just hit a double fall right now at a deuce. So it it kinda is feeling that this set might be going Colin's way just because she just looks a little bit less um, a little bit more calm and you know, composed, ready for the moment. 
and there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Alexandrova also just looks more, yeah, she just looks really frustrated and sort of unhappy, you know, mm -hmm. this or and having that happen this early in the, in the match, I don't think that really bodes well for her. Mm -hmm. Whenever I see Danielle Collins like performing this well, I get so like, why doesn't she like this all the time? <laughs> like, yeah. It's so nice. It's so entertaining when she plays this well. Mm -hmm. I, ugh. Yeah, I really like her energy as well. Like at first, like when you see it for the first time, it's like, what is happening? Because she just has kind of a lot of it, but you kind of get into it. Like as, as you watch, it's like, yeah, like you go. <laughs> You you celebrate the way you find it most most fitting, and it just kind of draws you in just because it's like so much fire. I think one of her favorite um, gifts that I've I, I've seen of her is the classic one that she like hits a backhand I guess past Halep and it just kind of like blows <laughs> blows the racket. That's a really fun fun one. Okay, so she obviously gets the break. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm I'm not there yet, but I'm looking at the score on the screen. Have you? I don't know much about um, Alexandrova. Uh, I don't think I've really ever watched her play. Is there anything that you know about her that like you could tell me? You know, um, I basically know of the match that I saw with them um, when she played Igor Sviantek. This, um, I think I saw most of that one. She's she's like one of those classic hard-hitting tennis players. Um, big forehand, receives her from the side of the baseline, big everything. So it's a, it's a very like um, similar game style to Collins. Um, how how so, did that... Yeah. How did she end up beating... Sviatek, because because she's also like a pretty hard hitter, you know. I mean, she's got the arm. So how how yeah. did that? I didn't watch that match. Mm. Yeah. So how she, did how did that work in her favor against someone like Ida? Yeah. She was just in the zone. It was like it, it, she couldn't do anything wrong. She was just like seeing the game in slow motion. She just could hit the ball anywhere, and because she was rushing Sviatek so much. Um, she, she had, like just had no time to grind anything like before she knew it she was like down like four or five in the in the second set so it was just like it was just like one of those moments where like aggressive tennis is like in perfection so that's basically what happened and she had, like just had no actual time to do anything like she couldn't even figure anything out to do. And she was like really attacking hard um, Shantek's uh, second serve. Um, even the first serve, she was like receiving from like very, um, very aggressive positions. Um, so, yeah, it's um, Shantek kind of felt pretty discombobulated in that match, like almost confused that sometimes just she, she had, she felt extremely uncomfortable. like tennis wise so I that's see. that's how she took it if she she can pull something like that against collins that's interesting but collins just has a little bit more um flat power on uh quick surfaces to you know kind of figure her own way back into this match with like power hitting as well so it's it's a definitely a very different matchup i see okay yeah. This is, how long has it been already? Like 30 minutes in this match? I feel like that's pretty quick to get to, mm -hmm. what, 5-2? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty quick match. That's what I love about, like, the, the tour uh, tournaments. Because when I'm watching a Grand Slam, I feel like I, I have to invest like minimum three hours of my time 
you know, throughout the day to watch these things. And I know I have to do it. So like I have to plan my day around sitting around for three to four hours <laughs> watching a match. Yeah. But with these, it's great. It's like an hour and a half and then I'm, I can move on. I can do something else. <laughs> yeah. Why is Miami like this? Asks Ghost of Dear Ladies. Why is Miami like what? Like um, empty seats in the front rows. I think just the tickets that they sell is like mad expensive. So that's probably yeah, probably. I noticed that a lot during Rabakina's match as well. Like there were a lot of empty seats, mm -hmm. and I was kind of thinking, like, I mean, this is a well, Wimbledon winner. Like, shouldn't shouldn't the stadium be full? Yeah. And it, and in this match, like you know, this is an American playing, so I would think people would really mm -hmm. come out for it, but like. Yeah. It's also yeah. probably like mad hot out there. <laughs> oh yeah. So it it's also inside the stadium. I like I don't it's like a stadium inside a stadium, so I don't know if that like makes things a little different. I don't have any mm -hmm. idea. All I know is that I really liked better um Cranon Park. <laughs> I think this is a step down from, from then. It sounds like the players also feel that way. Hmm. Just going off of Casper uh, Rude's rant. Oh yeah. Uh, to the chair on fire about conditions and stuff like that uh, yeah. at the tournament. Yeah, it sounds like it didn't used to be this way. Is this the first year they're doing it at at this place? No, I, I think they switched in 20, 20, 2020 or twenty twenty one. Like it's. I remember watching it, it's like it's it was it wasn't that long ago it switched. Okay. But yeah. Seventy six degrees, fifty percent humidity. It's not that bad, yeah. I suppose for, for Miami it's not that bad. <laughs> Humidity makes it unpleasant, yes. True. I, uh, that's why I live where I do, because I hate humidity. It's California? Yeah. I won't deal, I just can't. I lived in on the East Coast for four years, uh, and as soon as like the humid humidity season would come out, I'd be like, oh, this is miserable. I hate this. <laughs> I can't handle this, so. I'm the opposite. I grew up in like an extremely humid place and I hate dry heat. It's it's like it's like I'm roasting. I don't know, you get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's my you're in Montreal, right? Yeah. Montreal is considered humid, but to be fair, like where I, I'm from Brazil originally, so comparatively where I'm from, it's like, I felt it was kind of dry in here, so yeah. I've only ever been to Montreal in winter. Oh yeah. Uh, and it's, I mean, I'm very jealous that, that you live there because that's like my favorite city in the whole world. Yeah, really? That's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like even traveling there, like as a Canadian, like I felt how much, you know, people in Montreal, people in Quebec, like hate Canadians who like don't speak French. I felt that and I still was like, yeah. this place is amazing. <laughs> I yeah. would live here. <laughs> so yeah. I'm very jealous. <laughs> yeah, like it's the language landscape is getting even more complicated with the current government. But That's I feel like what I I've feel heard. like Montreal yeah, I feel like the Montrealers like in, maybe the ones that live downtown and more to the west of the island are more more open towards um towards the Canadian identity. So yeah, but yeah, it can easily feel um, if you don't speak French that people might be like, what are you doing here? <laughs> the funny thing was that, you know, I I do speak enough French to get by mm. in restaurants, but but I was raised in the States. So the, the French that I know is like France French. It's not okay. Quebecois French. 
so when I was there, I was there with Canadian relatives and they're like, oh, well, that's why they're everyone's like being mean to you. It's because they can oh. tell that it's not like the right French that yeah. you're speaking. And even if I was there with a friend of mine who was from Norway, she got better service <laughs> at restaurants that's than I did. <laughs> it was bizarre. But despite that, I had the best time. I love it there. Like mm. I would move there in a heartbeat if I actually learned Quebecois French. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So we've how many match, uh, not match points, sorry, set points. How many set points have we had so far? Because I've just had one on my side. Um, I somehow wasn't looking. So okay. yeah. I was watching the match, but I wasn't looking at the score, if that makes any sense. <laughs> oh, at man, there was five. like five. Yeah, five sets. Oh, my set goodness. Points. It was like a lot 40. And... Um, Five side points come and gone. Five three now. That's a good hustle from Alexander Ovis. Actually, could be an interesting, um, could be an interesting point in this in this in this match. Having held, even if she loses the set, it could be good confidence for the second. So oh, now I'm that. on set five. Set point yeah. five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I I agree. I think this could. She can like fight this off. Oh. Great hustle from uh, Collins in the first point of the 5-3 game. Yeah, things could shift like very... That's the, the coolest thing about tennis for me is like it, it can shift so fast, even if like, you know, with Collins about to take the set, you know, if Alexandrova, you know, wins it, wins the game at 5-2 and then it's 5-3 and she's serving, like that could change the entire momentum uh of the set and then the match as a whole like that mm -hmm. completely that she could totally disrupt collins in like two seconds and i love that <laughs> oh, man the returns are just coming on fire this game is good i'm just gonna say that it's gonna be interesting. Okay. I'll, I'll keep an eye on it when it Collins actually gets there. Collins has been playing some extremely good defense and turning defense into attack as well. So. Yeah, only 48% of her first serves in. Interesting. Okay, I'm at the game. I'm ready. <laughs> Coming back a little bit from, uh, let me see. Where are we at first? Where do you love? I'm, the game is just starting for me, so I'm okay. four points behind. <laughs> Jane says, I grew up in humidity and I relish dry heat. I find humidity suffocating. I understand that people may like different things and just yeah that's okay <laughs> for me i find humidity better but it's just just that's that's the way i am <laughs> but yeah i totally get why people would not like you know the yeah. dry heat of the desert like it's it can be really rough i don't like it sometimes mm -hmm. um and i wish occasionally there was more moisture in the air <laughs> but uh i think on the whole it work. It just works better for me. Alexandrova gets off court after losing the first set, six three. I think Alexandrova could. I just. Saw, I'm just seeing some some of the highlights of the first set, and she's hit a drop shot here and there. I think that she can. Instead of just hitting hard, she can try to mix it up with like some slices or coming to the net a bit more often. I think she could. Yeah, I, I feel like I've only rough. seen yeah. a baseline game from both of them in this yeah. so far. Yeah, and I think Collins is doing that better than than Alexandrova. So, uh, yeah.
Where are you at now? Uh, I am at the first set point at 40 left. Okay. If there, I actually don't even know if there's multiple set points. I'm just assuming. The energy out there is bland. <laughs> Agree. Is what? Um, ghost on the comment says the energy out there is bland. I feel like that never bothers someone like Danielle Collins. I've seen her play in like many kind of almost empty stadiums, and she's she pumps herself up like better than anyone so she, yeah it seems like she doesn't need you know yeah. the whole crowd behind her or anything to to get her to play well which is cool okay there you go yeah she's one so yeah it only took that one yeah so what so you think you know the only thing that like Alexandrova could do at this point is just sort of like switch it up from just playing at the baseline and just playing power game. She needs to kind of move around more. Is there anything else that she can do? Um, yeah, I think that she's just when she's played the touch game, it has worked right. And um, it's she may be a little nervous, like she committed like a few errors uh, by just kind of overplaying, trying to overhit. Um, and I think that she's got the you know, the game to try to like some slices or drop shots more. And Collins is not like the best, best mover in, in the game. Like can say that like, and so I feel like it could like throw her off a little bit more and it could open the space to more aggressive shots, especially, especially on the forehand. I think that if Alexandrova wants to play the game of uh, being forehand to forehand, it's risky because like Collins is just, is very solid, so. Um, you have to be more solid. Whereas, like, you worked on Sviantec because it's kind of like the fast court. I felt like uh, it, it was something that she could rush, uh, rush her, but like coming up to Collins is a completely different matchup. What do you think? What have you seen in this uh, her set? I would, I, I think I agree with you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you kind of, you, you cover it. You're, you're a lot better at the analysis than I am. So yes, I, I agree with you a hundred percent. Collins deserves more love from her home crowd in her last home tournament. We don't know totally if this is her last tournament yeah. i know she's taught you know i i know she's talked about retire this being her last year before retiring but like i feel like she kind of said that after having like a bad week of or uh, like a bad string of like matches right she's still young she's still playing well like this might shift things for her you don't know but yes, yeah. if she makes the final, I'm sure the fans in Florida will come out for her. Mm. Yeah, she said that after the, the loss to Giantec and the Australian Open, correct? I think so. Yeah. Which was, oh, if I remember correctly, like that match was in pretty great. <laughs> I think she yeah. had a real shot at beating her. She um, did. It was, was like 4-1 up. Oh, she could have I mean, been five one up at some point. In so the, yeah, in a massive point. loss for her. But as far as I know, she's not majorly injured. Mm. Um, so I I don't see why she like you know like you never know. I don't want to I don't want to speculate on her on where she is in her life and her career. But I would hope that she either retires on a high point or reconsiders this year. Hmm. Two breaks up in the third, yeah. <laughs> Talking tennis, says, yeah. Yeah. Uh. Has Alexandrova come back from the bathroom break on your screen? No, I was just wondering, since I have the sound off, like what what the holdup is so that's what's that's what we're waiting on okay oh she's walking back now okay
it's just more of the same in this game. This first game was not what I think Alexandrova should have done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she had a pretty pretty good game at down 5-2. She should have let that one go um, and start fresh knowing that she had a good time. Um, she hasn't been broken yet, but yeah, it's the triple break point, so she's going to need some um, well, a little bit more patience, I would say, like didn't, take a deep didn't, breath before serve or something. Yeah, go didn't ahead. Call, didn't Collins break her in the first set? Uh, yeah, she did, but like as down down five two, um, she she held from to to bring it to five three in right. the first set okay. when she had like she had to save five set points. Oh, bad start. This could be a short night. <laughs> <laughs> the game is only just starting for me. Let me check some uh, stats on uh, Alexandrova. I think if man, I think if if Danielle Collins plays this way against. Rabakina, I think there's a very good chance of her winning the tournament. <laughs> mm -hmm. This that would be that would be crazy. <laughs> that would be very insane. Yeah. I would love that though. Very interesting on um Alexandrova is that she's reached one semi-final in WTA 1000 in her career uh, in Madrid, which is kind of fast clay court because of altitude and whatnot. Um, but she's kind of backing up her her Miami showing from last year where she reached the quarterfinal. So she did one better already. So it's a tournament that she she likes apparently. I find it very interesting that like certain players just do well at specific tournaments. Mm. You know, like Medvedev just this is his like he just plays well here. Uh you know, the court just works for him. I I, I or the conditions do. I you know, I, yeah. I don't know enough about like how the how the court is to really talk about it, but mm. I find it really interesting that, that it works certain tournaments just work better for others, especially if it's all like the same you know, surface. Yeah. I think Medvedev, Medvedev is such a, such an interesting case because he's never won the same tournament more than once. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. All of his titles came in different places, in different cities even. Um, so it, it actually a super fun fact is that even if he w went on to win, um, to win the Canadian Open this year, he would still have won it in two different cities because it's in Montreal and Toronto. <laughs> Where did he win it before? Uh, he won it in Toronto um, 2021. Okay. So he is going to be in Montreal this year. So if he comes uh, in and win it, it's going to be <laughs> two different <laughs> cities. What Do you know why they... Uh, I should probably ask this when the tournament is actually on, but why do they do it in two different cities? I don't particularly know. I mean, in terms of it being two different cities, um, it kind of makes sense to have a tournament in both, um, but um, the sites aren't big enough to have a joint tournament. Uh, so, okay. so that's one of the reasons why it's it's um, it's separated. But the reason why it switches, I don't know. Just I guess because we can. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
particularly any reason for it. Yeah. They just couldn't decide on the better city. Although, in my opinion, it's there's an obvious winner. <laughs> yeah, it used to be only in Toronto, but um, I think this they started hosting in Montreal in this in the eighties. Mm -hmm. mm. But yeah, like in terms of atmosphere, I think Montreal atmosphere is is a lot crazier, and they always have better numbers. <laughs> That makes sense. Yeah, specifically also for the, the women's tournament, it's always is always better in Montreal. I think also like there are more, aren't the Canadian, I guess, except for um, Bianca Andreescu, I think she's from, from, uh, yeah, from Mississauga. Outside of, uh, Mississauga, thank you. Yeah. Um, the Felix is from Montreal. Yeah, he is. So it makes sense to me why the numbers would be better over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember where Chap Chapo is from. Oh, Swarna is saying something interesting here in the comments that Rabakna has spent 11 hours and 40 minutes on court already. So that's... Yeah. That's more than, um, than Sabalenka spent on at the Australian Open. <laughs> yeah it uh, yeah that's i'm nervous for her in the i don't want her to you know play poorly in the final yeah but yeah if you look at the comparison of, of her and collins collins is much fresher mm -hmm. yeah and i think collins is basically play, playing with nothing to lose right if the decision of uh, retiring mm -hmm. is like you know, solid in her mind right now is just like, well, I'm just gonna go for broke and that's it. Like, I'm just gonna leave nothing on the table. Yeah. But she's still not playing like high risk mm -hmm. tennis, at least not not compared to some. I would say. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah. I think she's controlled still pretty aggression. strategic. Yeah, it's it's yeah. yeah, it's very controlled aggression. Yeah, which could. I think it's kind of hard to go up against Rubakina because she's kind of she's very similar in that way. Yeah. So yeah, it'll be interesting. We're we're what two to love up already. Yeah, Alexandra was gonna need to kind of hang in there not concede another break of serve and uh, see if she can catch a drop in the uh, in um in level from collins so that she can try to catch one of the breaks back and see if she can turn this match around but like the way she, it's it's going right now collins is is in a very good position in this set already so Well, yeah, there are some really, <laughs> uh, I'm at uh, 30 all mm. where there was the, um, the let mm. that Collins was kind of all the way on the other side of the court. It was just good, good play. Yeah. Good rally. Excuse me.
I can't tell if this person in the comments is kidding or not. Uh, who's winning? I don't know how to watch tennis, but they bet on Ekaterina. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. But who's winning? Uh, Daniel I mean, Collins guess... is winning. Like. <laughs> oh, I think it just can't watch it. It just doesn't have a stream. Oh, I see. Yeah, I mean, I won't go on in my, my usual tirade of how impossible it is to watch tennis in the States. Um, oh. So I sympathize for those who can't get streams. Even the stream that I have sucks. <laughs> Yeah, it's just. Uh, tennis is crazy, and like, I thought I thought we before I didn't know that WTA TV was like blocked in the U.S. in the U.K. as well right now, um, which is crazy. But like, I thought we kind of had it covered. Like, oh yeah, like the, they have their own streaming service which you can have everywhere, and then we just kind of have to figure it out for the Grand Slams. But not even that. It's just yeah. Kind of, it's really is all over the place. Depends on where you are, like what's your territory, how much money you have. <laughs> That's also a thing, because <laughs> you have to buy like a bunch of streaming services. And even for the Grand Slam, it's so annoying. Because yeah, when I keep hearing like all, you know, these sort of the money in, in the people who run the money in tennis, you know, complaining that like, well, tennis isn't very popular. You know, and like, how can we make it more popular in the States? Like, how can we get people into it? Like, and coming up with these ridiculous ways. And I'm like, just make it accessible. Like, just let me watch the sport. Yeah. Just get it, get out of these stupid contracts and let people watch the damn thing. Like, yeah. that's what will bring fans. It's not, you know, financing movies that stars Zendaya. Like, it's, that's not going to make people at least in my opinion, like that's not going to make anyone a fan. It's if they can't watch the sport in the first place. Yeah. So, but nobody listens to me. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you, right? Maybe by the time that the, um, talking tennis gets to like a million subs, we're going to have some poll. I don't know. There have been times when like I can't watch, I can't get any stream of a match. I can't even get like the radio feed of a match. So I will turn to our platform just so I can hear what's going on, yeah. <laughs> which is, it's a great option, uh, you know, but it should, you know, it shouldn't have to be like that. I should just be able to watch the, the things that I want. Meanwhile, this game is pretty good right now. Um, Alexandrova is like really throwing the kitchen sink at Collins and she's just coming out on top. And I, I said that she wasn't a great mover, but she's been moving extremely well right now. So maybe Alexandra is going to have to find something special. Um, uh, what a game. What a game from Collins. <laughs> what a hold. I'm at 30-15. Uh, We need Damien to review the Challengers movie. That would be very funny. Yeah. I, I I can't remember. Is it out already? I don't know. I thought it was going to be out like last year. Like, I thought, I yeah, it got, ready. it got pushed back because of uh, the writers uh, and actors strike out here. Um, that's true. I know that it just premiered. Hmm. Let's see. But it's not released until end of April. Yeah, I will watch it, and I will. I'm sure I will have a lot of opinions <laughs> about <laughs> yeah. about certain accuracies. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that they didn't even choose like a body double for Zendaya when she plays tennis. So she just kind of had to yeah. pretend to be good at it. So there's only so much acting can get you, right? So I mean, <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, we'll we'll see about that. And like, I will try to uh, not judge it too harshly on the, the premise itself that yeah. a that a young, recently retired player is completely giving up after one injury and then decides to coach. Like uh, that to me sounds completely inaccurate. <laughs> if anyone's ever met a tennis player before, yeah. <laughs> but I, I'll try to keep that under under wraps I'll, I'll try to see it as important for the story yeah but all the other small things like i'm, I'm gonna have an eye on and i think anyone like in our group chat will be really yeah <laughs> discerning with it yeah tennis is a very uh, it's a very critical um tennis fandom uh sports <laughs> fandom i'd say like uh, we like our stuff very very in a very particular way <laughs> Yeah. Surely making tennis free online and or TV would surely have more people interested in it, but green extortion would become too much the norm. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. These tournaments make so much money uh, and the broadcasting rights make the networks a lot of money and they have to come up with that money so they can pay people like John McEnroe enormous amounts of money to say absolutely nothing on television. So yeah, yeah they don't really care about, uh, they don't care at all about the fans. Yeah. But the craziest part about this is that, like, um, I heard from people that, from, like, higher ups inside tennis that the thing is that tennis is actually losing, not losing, but, like, they're, they're leaving so much money on the table because they're all of these, all of this breaking down of, like, the platforms and people don't know where to watch. It's just you lose money on ads and tennis isn't making nearly as much money as it should have. I think golf makes about like twice or three times as much money that um, tennis does. Um, and honestly, like if you have the, the Super Bowl making millions on 30 seconds ads, guess why that is, right? It's because there's so many people watching at the same time. Whereas, like, you had, like, the Indy Wales final, which had, like, 400,000 people. That's, like, nothing. It's it's crazy. It's, like, it's, it's tennis should be, for the size that this sport actually has and, like, for the money that is, like, running inside, it should be so, so much easier and better. Um, so, yeah, it's just... Yeah. There, it, there's the the greed from the short terms like paychecks that is coming. It's just like things are working great right now. So why should we change anything? Yeah. Well, somebody needs to pitch to them that they're gonna make like three times more money, and then they'll be like, oh, okay, we got a reason for it. I mean, I think one of the reasons football makes, at least like the NFL, makes mm -hmm. as much money as it does is because it's all on one network. Yeah. Like they don't have like the football channel. You know, it's all on, e at least in the States, it's all on ESPN. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> like them and basketball, like they're on ESPN. If you want to watch it, it's just on ESPN versus like, I mean, I know that you can get like the golf channel, you know, they have their own yeah. thing. Granted, I know nothing about golf. I have no idea how they're making as much money, but I do know that they are one of the sports that may deal with deals with, with Saudi Arabia. So that could be why they're making more money. Uh, than tennis um, but if they just put it all on a, a network that everybody has I yeah. think more people would be uh, uh, watching it even if it's just like oh well I just need something that's on then yeah. more people would get into it like for me it's it's all about the accessibility um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah just raising as many eyeballs as you can on the screen and just like raising the price on ads it's it's a very basic actually yeah. but yeah tennis hates poor people says uh, ghost they want to keep it exclusive that is very true in a lot of ways yeah well and i get that like it's kind of it's it's not an easy sport to understand although i've watched many football games and I still don't understand football. <laughs> However, I, I can understand that tennis is, the scoring system is weird. The rules are weird if you don't know them. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And it's long haul, like there isn't a time limit. And yes, average people cannot sink five hours <laughs> into watching it's a match. And it's easier yeah. when like, you know, soccer matches are only an hour and a half, like boom, we're done. I get yeah. it. I get it's kind of a hard sport to fall into and, and learn to love. But uh, if I think if we just started with accessibility and then yeah. like build everything else around that, that would that would really be something. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Because yeah, I've tried to explain tennis to friends of mine, and they just they glaze over. <laughs> I somehow have been very lucky that like I pass over my passion so much that people actually get very interested when I talk about tennis. But yeah, I think people are more interested in like like my fervor for it. Like they find that very amusing. But when I'm actually like, okay, so here, let me explain how the scoring works. Let me explain what an unforced error is. Like yeah. they kind of are like that. I don't <laughs> like that. That's a lot of words you're throwing around. But when I talk about like a player I really like or a match that was really great, they're sort of entertained by yeah how, the passion for it rather than the sport itself. I think before this match ends, we're going to see a lot of like big returns from Colleen still. She's just mm -hmm. catching, she's, she's getting even more energetic. I think at the closest she's getting, she's kind of like sniffing that final and she's, she's getting even more fired up. The back yeah. end is great right now. Let's see. Okay, we're, you're at four two, I am at, uh... You're, oh my god, you're at 30 all for two. I am so far behind. I think the longer yeah, yeah. I watch on Tennis Channel, like the longer the lag is. Like, I'm the game's not even over yet for me. I'm still at uh, three one, uh, three, uh, uh, three two? yes, three two. Thank you. Yeah, only now is the game starting. Yeah, oof. The returns in this 4-2 games from Collins are insane. And the craziest part is that Alexander like, just keeps aiming the, the serve into her backhand. She's not even kind of like doing body serve style. It's just really just poorly placed. She doesn't really look like she's um, at her best right now. As in, doesn't look injury, injured or anything, but maybe frustrated at her level, maybe getting tired. I've seen that comment before that she played um, singles and doubles last night um, or before this round. So it could be a reason. Maybe she's fatigued as well. Yeah, and if you have to, like, bring all of your power <laughs> against yeah. Collins, yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. Did Colin say, say where, why she was retiring? Um, she has health issues, uh, endometriosis and other things um, she has had to deal with during her career. So she's just kind of fed up with um, having to keep such a, you know, fight her body to be a professional athlete. So that's basically the main reason why she says yeah. she's retiring. It's totally understandable, you know. I, I I sympathize with her a lot, and and it's it, it's really sad that you know that is the reason. It's not really like she's still playing really well. She can still put so much pressure on mm -hmm. you know these top players, yeah. and even with that, like she still can't get her body to do what you know what it's capable of it's 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 painful to watch and to hear about uh so i sympathize with her on that but i i mean i do hope that you know this will give her a change of heart and be like oh i actually can still compete at a high level mm -hmm. my stream is so bad right now that like it's just frozen oh <laughs> like it's 
and then it kind of breaks up for a minute. Like I, I am. Oh, that's this just, very just sad. this is just sad. <laughs> So as Colin gets ready to serve for the match and a place in the final, I'm just going to have a look at like who she has had to beat in order to get there. Started off with lucky loser Bernarda Pera, um, beat the 30th seed Potapova, 6-2-6-2. Um, later on, she, in the third round, fourth round, she beat Sorana Kistea, 6-3-6-2. And then she took took down Carolyn Garcia, 6-3-6-2. It looks like she's getting better at every round. She only dropped the, the one set in the, her opening match. And ever since then, she hasn't dropped a set. It, that would be a really impressive run if she kept that going through the final. Yeah. I've had to restart my stream because <laughs> it was frozen for, for like a minute. Okay. She's closing in on 12 straight sets one. Damn. And I, I kind of thought that uh, Caroline Garcia would be in the final. That was sort of who I was thinking. Mm. After, that, would, that would be a good pick, yeah. Yeah, after she beat... Um, Coco. Yeah. Yeah. Collins is just in another world right now. She's, yeah. This, ever since dropping that first set to Bernardo Pera in the first round, she wasn't even taken to 6 4, to 4 all in the set. <laughs> she hasn't lost more than three games in a set ever since that, that one time. She, it's yeah. just in, imperial form from, from Collins right now. That's, that's fabulous. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so she's so you have a match point on your end. Yep. I'm only at serving for the match start. And we get it. <laughs> it, it was just, it's like almost no hesitation. She just knew it. She was gonna, she was just gonna win this match. Incredible stuff from her. Wait, is it already over for you? Yeah. Oh, okay. There, there it goes. You're getting there. It's, it's going to be quick. <laughs> yeah, I'm at 30, 30 love already. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom. <laughs> okay, I want to see what everybody else is seeing. <laughs> I don't think Collins has ever has ever won a WTA 1000 title. No, she has not. No, I don't think so. She has actually only won two titles in her career. What are they? She won Palermo Ladies Open Italy 250 on clay and the Silicon Valley Classic, um, which was where? Well, in the AWTA 500, and she also lost in the Australian Open final. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Interesting career. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, if she gets a WT, I mean, how old is she? She, 20, 30. She's 30 years old. She's 30. I mean, to win a 1,000 after you promised to retire at 30, like, that would be pretty amazing. I I think I will be. I love Elena Rabakina, but I think, I think I'm going to put my heart with 
with Collins for the final. Yeah. Let's see what's there head to head just before we hop off. Uh... Is play concluded for today? Uh, yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was the last match of the okay. day. So Rebecca has a 3-1 lead on Daniel Collins. Um, Collins has won their first match that they've played, and then since Collins has, uh, since Rebecca has won all three of the last ones, but they all went to three sets. So mm. it kind of looks like it could be an interesting one, and it would look like um, Rebecca could be a bit more tired and grinding a little bit more. And level wise, Collins is probably playing some of her best stuff. So. It wouldn't be surprising, honestly, like if Collins came back tomorrow, and, uh, not tomorrow, but like on Saturday and, and took the title. Yeah, I think she I think she has a fair chance. Mm -hmm. um, and then so the matches tomorrow are uh, in the first half of the day. We have Medvedev versus Sinner. And later half is Dimitrov versus Zverev. I mean, I don't know about the rest of the world. I'm kind of rooting for Dimitrov in that matchup. <laughs> No opposition here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Medvedev and Sinner should be a good match. They've played okay. like a lot in the last. I saw something today that was like, please, we're tired of this matchup. Like uh, something to that effect. I'm not tired. I like it. I know. <laughs> I don't know who was saying that. I was like, I'm fine with it. Like. <laughs> All right, guys. So I guess that closes it. Um, and just to um, go see the chat, say Collins always played well in Australia. She did. She's only ever reached the semifinals and finals there. So that's that's, that's good stuff. Um, yeah, Collins does well in the first half of the year, it seems. So Hope, wishing you guys a good men's semifinal day tomorrow and a good finals day, uh, finals weekend, really. So we we'll see you guys there. All right. Thanks for joining Isabelle as well. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Doing the first time together. Yeah, it's been fun. Have yeah. a good rest of your evening. You too. All right. See you all. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.